Hello everyone, my name is Sam Montague. I'm the chair of the Industrial Design Program uh, here at Wentworth. I'm sorry you can't come to campus uh, to see our great facilities, meet our great students, and meet our faculty. So I will try to uh, give you an overview in this video of what our program is all about. First of all, we have great students. Talented, they work hard, they have awesome energy, and they're really fun to work with. And the same holds true for our faculty. Talented, energetic, fun to work with. Industrial design is product design. Industrial design exists at the intersection between art, technology, and business. And where those three professions intersect is where industrial design lives. Our alumni are making award-winning designs in the profession, and it's really exciting for us faculty to see. You can also see the variety of things they work on, from Star Wars toys to Bose electronics to shoes. So why do you come to our program? To learn how to become a better creative problem solver and visually communicate your ideas at a professional level. So here's a case study project from junior year. We were sponsored by a company to redesign a tea kettle. So it starts off with identifying who do you want to design for. And we go out in the field and we find out what the needs and wants and values of our target audience is. Then we get into analyzing how products are used. And from those analysis, we start developing ideas. And drawing is a great way to quickly communicate the kinds of things we're thinking. And then from drawing, we start getting into three-dimensional development in order to understand form, human factors. Here we are drawing more things about identifying how parts may work. And then here's the final design developed in CAD um, and then through the magic of Photoshop placed into a kitchen setting so the client get, has an idea of what the student's intent is with the design. So what's fundamental to being a product designer is the studio experience. And here's a picture of our studio. It's not only a classroom, it's a workspace. It's where they live and do their work. So let's talk a little bit more about drawing, because we equate drawing with thinking. And drawing is a very powerful tool that designers use to communicate their ideas to clients and explore ideas on how to make things better. So our progression starts off with learning the fundamentals of perspective, line work, shading. And then we move into product rendering, using markers, quick sketching, quickly developing ideas. This is an important part of what we do, is thinking through our drawings. Again, Photoshop rendering, creating more photorealistic looks. We also have some really interesting technologies. So this is a Cintiq, and you can plug your computer right into this monitor, and it's a type of monitor with a special stylus you can draw right on the screen and create interesting designs. 3D development. 3D development is fundamental to what we do here at Wentworth. So as you can see on the left, that's Jonathan Ive. He's the uh, design lead at Apple Computer for many years. And he had this quote during an interview, which I think is really, really important. His quote is, so many of the designers that we interview at Apple don't know how to make stuff because workshops and design schools are expensive and computers are cheaper. And that's just tragic that you can spend four years of your life studying the design of three-dimensional objects and not make one. Well, we agree with Jonathan Ive. We think making things three-dimensionally is really important, which is why we have three dedicated shops to industrial design. And this is our uh, metal shop, and we have CNC lathes, CNC mills, traditional lathes, traditional mills. This is our wood shop. Um, we have a variety of woodworking uh, tools here, band saws, uh, table saws, wood lathes, sanders, drill presses. This is our plastic shop. Again, we can fabricate plastic here. Again, we have big CNC. We have uh, laser cutters. We have vacuum formers. And we use all these technologies to help uh, build our designs and create prototypes. So our progression starts off. We learn how to manipulate materials by hand. We get into machine building. We use different kinds of materials to help sketch our ideas. This is some vacuum forming and machining plastic. 
we get into prototyping because we have to test things in the real world and learning how to think, make things both by machine and by hand are really, really important. We did a bike design and build studio several years ago and the students had to make their own joints. They had to hand cut their own joints, hand fabricate their joints. They braze their frames. And then this is an example of one of the final bikes that the students made. Very impressive. We also use sewing machines so our students learn how to sew. We have a soft goods studio and a footwear studio, and so students learn how to make a variety of interesting soft goods. We also use modeling not just for final prototypes and final visual models, but we also use 3D development to understand things like human factors. So this is a human factors test buck, and here the designers are learning where's the right placement to make the controls, the handlebar seat height for an electric scooter. And this is the final design uh, they developed. And again, what's really, really important is it's informed by this kind of real world modeling before you get to the final CAD. Speaking of CAD, we have a professor, Simon Williamson, does a lot of work with outside companies and he also teaches his expertise to the students. So here's an example of some student CAD work. So this is a drone that was done, and this is part of a rapid prototyping class that we do with mechanical engineering. And then this is the actual drone that was fabricated um, using our uh, 3D facilities as well as mechanical engineering's 3D facilities. And so these drones actually had to fly. So it's the beautiful notion of, first of all, the art to the part. And here's some more examples of this kind of work that we do with mechanical engineering. This was a robot project that we did one year. So in our studios, we have uh, three types of 3D printers. We have Stratasys, we have Prusa, and we have Formlabs. And here's some examples of some of the students' work using each one of those technologies. We also have access to the Additive Manufacturing Lab, which is a campus-wide lab, and they can do some really interesting things, including printing in color and also printing in metal. Here's an example of an axe that was designed by one of our students in Adventure Studio, and the metal clip that you see that holds the axe head on was 3D printed. We have a study abroad program that takes place in the summer of the junior year. It is a Wentworth study abroad program. So you are taking Wentworth classes. You're just taking them over in Germany. That's where our headquarters are. We do a trip around uh, Europe to see different cities. That was Munich. This is obviously Paris. This is London. This is visiting uh, Mercedes-Benz in Stuttgart. This is visit visiting Ferrari um, in Italy. So as part of the trip, we like to travel around Europe and see all the interesting design that's going on. This is a picture of our studio. So we have studio space in Berlin. This is our apartments in Berlin. So the students spend 90 days over in Berlin and get a really wonderful immersive experience in design in Europe. Collaborations. So a lot of our design work is individual, developing our skills and developing our techniques to design. But we also like to work with other departments and other businesses uh, outside of Wentworth. So Sector Vector was a really fun collaboration we had with the, uh, the physics department. So Dr. Sorokman and Dr. O'Brien in the physics department invented a space battle game and they built this really wonderful prototype and they tried it out in their classes and they said, this is really, really cool. We're doing a space battle game and we'd like to make it into a real game. And so we worked with the physics. Our students uh, worked with the physics students and the physics faculty. And this is a prototype of the refined game they developed. So you can see there's the spaceships. You can see instead of uh, missiles that are paper clips, we have missiles that are uh, shaped like missiles. And then this is the final game. And this has actually been produced it's a production game and schools can buy it to make learning uh, vectors much more exciting. So this is a collaboration we did with uh, Biomedical 
to redesign a non-contact thermometer. And one of our students' uh, designs actually was patented. This is a collaboration we did with the math department to take one of their algorithms and turn it into a visual model. This is a project we did with an outside company called Aquabotics to make underwater drones for consumer use. This is a collaboration we did, I showed you earlier, with Calphalon. We've also done a collaboration with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, and we've done a variety of projects with them. And one of them that was really interesting was the development of the opioid toolkit. It started as a student project. It is now being produced. And again, the kit is there. If somebody's having an overdose, there's medicine in the kit that people can inject uh, to help the patient uh, survive an overdose. Industry presentations. We love to have our industry friends come in and present their design work and inspire the students. And here's some examples of some of the people that have come in. This is Margaret Maz, and she's actually an alumnus of the program, and she's now a head designer at Kohler. And so she came in to share all the interesting things that she's working on. This is uh, Adam Connor, and he gives a wonderful uh, lecture every year about the critique process and how professionals use critique to make their ideas and their designs better. This is Maddie Brown, and Maddie came in. He's designer at Hasbro, and he came in and talked about all his designs at Nerf and making Nerf <clears throat> guns, and that was pretty fun. Co-op. Co-op is integrated into our uh, educational experience. Um, here we see uh, Joe Bradford and Amanda Weinberger, and Joe did a co-op at Hasbro when he was a student, and now he's a lead designer at Hasbro. So a lot of times your co-op experience can turn into a professional job when you graduate from school. Amanda Weinberger, the same thing. Amanda was a surfer. She wanted to move out to California. She got a co-op with Hobie, and then after she did a co-op, they hired her full-time. We also have great relationships with other companies, a lot of the big footwear companies in Boston, and students do footwear co-ops. Um, this is Anna Ingstrom, and Anna is an example of the importance of driving your education and co-op experience. So Anna's from Sweden, and she was really interested in working with uh, Volvo, so she got a job with Volvo Trucks in Sweden, so she went to, back to Sweden for a semester and worked for Volvo Trucks. So some frequently asked questions about our program. We do not require a portfolio to enter into the freshman year, but we are a competitive program, and our students are doing really great things out in the profession. And Lino won Best Senior Portfolio in the Northeast District for the Industrial Designers Society of America. They have this competition every year, and the schools in our district are Pratt, RISD, RIT. So Lino was competing against all the top schools, and the the uh, professionals at IDSA felt that Lino's portfolio was the best, and he's the second winner we've had in the past eight years. So again, our students are working at the top level, and uh, so we're a competitive program. And so instead of having our review to get into the program, we have a GPA review at the end of the sophomore year. So you must achieve a 2.5 or above in all your classes to advance on to the junior year. So these are the classes from the first year and the second year that we use to calculate your program GPA. So you need to average a 2.5 in these classes to move on to the junior year. Another frequently asked question is laptops. We have a laptop program and we use laptops. They're completely integrated into our studio experience and a lot of the support classes that we have for design. So the laptops come with the software that you're going to need for design. The school is constantly updating the software, so you're always using the latest versions of the applications. Materials. You should expect to pay roughly $600 in the fall semester for your materials. We don't have textbooks, so our big expense is material expense. There are other programs, like if you're taking introductory physics in engineering, the book for that class is $300. So the purchase of materials, while it is a real expense, relative to other classes, other programs at the school, it's just about the same. 
We also have a summer drawing intensive. There are some of you that may want to work on your freehand drawing before you uh, start classes in the fall, so we do have a summer drawing intensive. We are hoping we will be back on campus in the summer, but if not, we will have a version of the summer drawing intensive um, online that you can participate in. If you want more information about the drawing intensive, again, we haven't solidified the date yet, but if you want more in, uh Again, more information on the drawing intensive, please contact Tracy DeSalvatore at Tracy T or DeSalvatore T at wit.edu. Tracy is the academic coordinator for industrial design and she will be uh, really helpful uh, answering your questions. Salary of our graduates, uh, first year out of school is $52,000. So if you want more information about industrial design, here's some websites that you can look at. Um, to find out about the profession. If you want to know more information about uh, our Wentworth Industrial Design Program, here's some websites you can look at to find out more. We also have a video that was done by a student um, on YouTube. So if you search Wentworth Industrial Design on YouTube, uh, this icon will show up. And this is a student film made by Nick Dunleavy. And it's really awesome, and it really gives you an idea of what our students are like and what the culture of industrial design at Wentworth is all about. So I highly encourage you to check out that movie. I also want to mention that I will be going um, on sabbatical this summer. So my colleague, uh, Derek Cassio, will be taking over as interim department chair. So here's some more things about Derek Cassio, some more websites that you can look at to find out more about Derek. If you have any questions, as I said before, you can talk to our academic coordinator, Tracy, and you can email her, and here is her email. And you can also contact Derek, and this is his email. And so I hope this has uh, been informative to all of you. I'm sorry, again, we can't meet in person, but I'm looking forward to meeting you all in September when we all return back to campus. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.